Hi everybody! I am back with another video for the collection of tutorials on game development in Godot Engine. This time we won't be dealing with shaders or 3D models. Instead, I would like to focus on a possibly simpler but definitely no less important area in the game development with the Godot Engine, and that is the user interface that would work correctly on every device and screen resolution. Let's get started. The reason I decided to make a video about creating a UI in Godot 4 is that the official documentation is sometimes unclear and not all sections related to control nodes had been updated. At least, that was the state at the time of recording this video. It may have been resolved by now. In any case, it won't hurt to go through the process of creating a simple UI, which I've tested on a prototype of a text-based game I recently started. Let me start the game and briefly describe the UI elements. So, as I was saying, it's quite simple. In the top bar, I have the game title and control buttons, which are not finished yet, but improving them won't be too difficult. The important detail here is that the text element is set to fill the remaining width of the container that is not occupied by the second element, which is the button section. This is achieved using the expand parameter that I activated. If we don't use that, the element would only take up the minimum width determined by the length of its text. This is something to keep in mind when defining the UI for our game if we encounter a similar issue. I'll explain this in more details shortly, once I close the game and return to the editor. The more interesting part is the main UI below the top bar. We have two scroll containers, each displaying a different rich text label. We'll get to that. Together, they form the main panel with variable width, while the right panel has a fixed width based on this square uh, that will contain the minimap. For this element, I set a custom minimum size rather than a fixed width, so it won't collapse even though it doesn't contain anything yet. When I resize the window, we'll see how the individual components respond. Let's make it so this way and expand just do any kind of experiments and we can see that it's still keeping the original layout more or less yes the size of all components is changing but the proportional ratio is still maintained and the square remains the square the important thing is that at any window size, the components will fulfill their function and display content in a readable form. So, when I start clicking on these hotspots and performing actions, uh, we will see that the main panel fills with text, while the first one still shows the beginning of the text. The second panel automatically scrolls to the end, which is intentional. I'll get to that in a moment. Let's close the game and take a look at the scene tree. Do you see what makes this scene special? All nodes are control nodes, which can be easily recognized by the green icons. Only the root node is a canvas layer, but it could just as well be a control. If you want to save yourself a lot of trouble, use control nodes exclusively when creating UI and avoid mixing them with other types. There are exceptions like file dialog or some pop-ups, but in general, control nodes work best with control nodes. So, what do we have here? First of all, a panel that covers the entire screen because I wanted some texture to show through between the individual containers. I didn't change anything else except for 
uh, some settings for the texture to make it repeat. Uh, it is right here, I guess. Yeah, tile, tile. Correctly in order, all directions. Have a slightly lower alpha value and so on. So the purpose of this panel is merely to provide the background texture that would fill the whole viewport. That's why I keep it on the top of the node tree to make the engine displayed always below all other components. The second node, I'll just collapse that, the second node displayed across the entire previous panel, let me just collapse here, is named main container and its type is box container, more precisely vbox container, as can be seen from the icon indicating vertically arranged components. The second type is hbox container, which in contrast arranges components horizontally. Both of them are among the most commonly used containers and practically the entire UI you see here is composed of a combination of these mentioned containers. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, the main container contains the top bar and the game area. Both of these elements were added as child node of, let me just show that, child nodes of a margin container which we can recognize by this symbol. This allows us to set the element's margin from the edge so that it's not too tightly attached to it. This is done in theme overrides constants, where we can define the size of each edge separately. I think there is no need to repeat the description from the first part of this video, so I'll just briefly mention that the inner elements of the top bar are arranged using the hbox container, there it is, uh, which is used once again in the component containing control buttons, right here, the icon container. Similarly, I'm dividing the game area again using the hbox container, this would be right here, game container, into left and right parts. I'll just emphasize that the game margin container, this one, has the expand attribute set for vertical sizing, so it nicely fills the remaining space in the parent container, because what if I cancel that? You can see it's too collapsed. Let's put it back and it fills the entire area. Inside the game container, we see two vertically arranged containers and it's important to note that the location control uh, container, which is this one, is again expanded horizontally. If not, you can see what happens. So let's put it back. When we expand it, I mean this node, we finally get to the scrollable text. I start with the text scroll container, which needs to be expanded vertically to fill the entire space. I wanted to set a black background for it, which is usually done using a panel. So one option would be to add a panel as a child node of this text uh, scroll container. However, we have a better way. We can add the panel directly in theme overrides, uh, styles, and here it is, which saves us one node in our node tree. Now we can finally add a rich text label this time, this, this note, to display the actual text. However, I'd like to, uh, the text to have some margin on all sides for better readability, so we'll enclose it in another margin container first. And again, we set the expand in the layout container sizing, uh, this time in both directions and added a child node, a rich text label as a child node. As for the rich text label, I changed two properties. I enabled BB code because I will want to change text color and insert links. And in addition, I set, I set what? Yeah, somewhere here in markup, 
I disabled meta underlined because uh, I wanted to prevent links from being underlined, of course. Similarly, I set up the second, uh, I set up the second rich text label in the lower part with one important difference. I activated the scroll following property. This ensures that adding new text using a script will automatically scroll down to make such text immediately visible, as we could have observed during uh, the game show at the beginning of this video. And that's actually all. I would also add that for the info container, there it is, this right part, I set the custom minimum size to 200 pixels. Here you can see it for the x-axis, so that the container is displayed with this width even when it doesn't contain any content. And also uh, 200 pixels in both directions for the panel that will later contain a square-shaped minimap. The last rich text label, here it is, is again set to scroll down after adding text. By the way, does anybody know how to detect that the scroll bar is active, so I would be able to insert another margin between the text and the scroll bar? I didn't figure it out yet, so hopefully there is a solution, although undocumented, most likely. Thank you for watching, and I hope I was able to clarify at least the basics of creating a responsive UI in Godot 4. As I progress with this game and the UI becomes more complex, I'd be happy to create a follow-up video to demonstrate advanced techniques for improving UI layout. Have a wonderful day and see you in the next video.